The data from the Country Similarity Index was used to create a hierarchical cluster of every country in the world. However, it may be best to look at the world's nations as a connected web, not as hierarchical clusters, since the data reveals the relationship of countries to each other is more of a gradient than having clearly defined groupings. Therefore, a diagram was created to reveal more intricate linkages between countries rather than simply clustering them into regions. The index attempts to quantify how similar countries are to each other relative to other countries. It weighs equally five major aspects of countries, their demographics, culture, politics, infrastructure and geography. Hopefully, this diagram will help people understand the similarity of countries relative to each other better than a traditional map which may only show geographic adjacency and political boundaries. The logic of the connected web is as follows. Each country is connected to its most similar country and also the next most similar country that is not more similar to the first most similar country. For example, Brunei's most similar country is Malaysia. However, its next most similar countries, Indonesia, Singapore and the Philippines are all more similar to Malaysia than Brunei. The next country that is more similar to Brunei than Malaysia is Oman, but it is only the fifth most similar overall. Therefore, Brunei is on a spectrum somewhere between Malaysia and Oman. In reality, the web would need to be three-dimensional, since there are limits to what can be shown clearly on a two-dimensional graphic. In order to fit all the connections on a two-dimensional web, it was necessary to break some of the lines where there is significantly less similarity. For example, United States is on a spectrum between Mexico and Canada. However, since the United States is far different from Mexico, it only has a narrow, not a full connection. Please keep in mind that just because some countries are close to each other on this graphic, does not necessarily mean they are very similar to each other. Only the lines connecting countries are meaningful, not their location on the graphic. For example, although Suriname and Vanuatu are next to each other in the graphic, no lines are between these countries, so no relationship is necessarily implied. The thicker the line, the closer the similarities between the countries are. In the Western world, some clear groups emerge. The English-speaking countries create a spectrum with the United States and Ireland at the extremes. A loop forms approximately around the Baltic and North Seas. There is also a clear group of countries located around the Mediterranean Sea. Countries formerly part of Austria-Hungary are clustered together. Slavic countries are connected to each other, but the former countries of Yugoslavia are especially close together. Except for the Baltic states, countries of the former Soviet Union are also grouped together. Spain and Chile are the most similar pair of countries in Europe and South America. Both countries speak Spanish and have a relatively high level of development. Kazakhstan is the most Russian-influenced country in Central Asia. Many ethnic Russians still live there even after the fall of the Soviet Union. They also have similar infrastructure. The Central and South America region has three distinct clusters of highly similar countries. Interestingly enough, Mexico is one exception to this pattern. One reason is that Argentina and Mexico both have a lot of dry lands, but also some tropical areas. Furthermore, their GDPs per capita are nearly identical. Haiti is the most similar in the region to a sub-Saharan African country. Since most of its people are of African descent, its development is not very high, and like many African countries, has French as its official language. Due to the history of British colonization and Indian indentured labors in the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad and Tobago as well as Guyana, both Fiji and Sri Lanka are connected to these Caribbean countries, although they still have some big differences, especially in geography. The Levant is at the geographic center of the Middle East, so it is no wonder that there are three distinct branches coming off from Jordan. One branch includes Arabic-speaking countries in North Africa, while another branch includes the countries located on the Arabian Peninsula. A third branch includes the countries in the Middle East that are not Arab, but adopted the Arabic script, although they speak Indo-European languages like Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Israel is a real outlier within the region. It has a different religion and also a different writing system than the countries around it. It also has more European traits than other countries in the Middle East and North Africa. Many Jewish Europeans have migrated to Israel in the past century. 
Yemen has some traits of both the Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa. It is one of the poorest Arab countries since its infrastructure has been destroyed due to ongoing civil war. In Sub-Saharan Africa, there are four distinct groups of countries, countries bordering the Sahara Desert that are heavily influenced by Arabs, English-speaking countries in West Africa, English-speaking countries in East and Southern Africa, and French-speaking countries. Madagascar is one outlier in the region since its people natively speak Austronesian languages and have some Southeast Asian ancestry, so it has some traits of countries in the South Pacific, unlike the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. Vanuatu is especially similar to it since both countries are tropical islands that were once colonized by France. South Africa and Australia are the most similar pair of Sub-Saharan, African and Western world countries. Both have English as their official language and are mostly Christian. Furthermore, their geography is similar. They are both located in the Southern Hemisphere and border the Indian Ocean. They have a variety of different climates but are mostly desert. In comparison to other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Africa is fairly well developed as well. Equatorial Guinea is the only country in Africa with Spanish as its official language, so Nicaragua is another tropical Spanish-speaking, predominantly Christian country that it connects to. India is clearly at the center of the highly diverse South Asia region, with several countries that border it being similar to it in different ways. Bhutan is part of the South Asia region, but it has many of the same traits as countries in the mainland Southeast Asia region, since it is mostly Buddhist and its people have mostly East Asian ancestry. At the other end of the spectrum, Pakistan is more like the Middle East. It is predominantly Muslim, uses the Arabic script, and its land is mostly desert. Bangladesh also branches out from India, but it also has some traits like Indonesia since they are the two largest Muslim-majority countries located in tropical climates. The core countries of Central Asia are made up of the former republics of the Soviet Union that are mostly Muslim but now have secular governments. Turkey is the Central Asian country most like Europe. Not only is it geographically closer, but it is also part of NATO and the European power grid. Furthermore, its people have mostly Caucasian ancestry. On the other end of the spectrum, Mongolia is the country in the region most like East Asia. It is mostly Buddhist, and its people have mostly East Asian ancestry. The countries of East Asia are relatively different from each other, but they are also far different than most other countries in the world, so they are grouped together. They have a clearly defined circular relationship located around the East China Sea. China and Taiwan are both Chinese. North Korea and South Korea are both Korean. However, China and North Korea both have authoritarian governments run by a single party. Taiwan, South Korea and Japan have democratic governments and are highly developed. Some Southeast Asian countries have many traits of East Asian countries. Both Vietnam and China have authoritarian governments run by their own communist parties. Despite very little language similarity, their people follow Mahayana Buddhism and also folk religions that venerate their ancestors. Singapore and Taiwan are both densely populated tropical islands located in the Pacific Ocean. Over 75% of people in Singapore are ethnically Chinese. Southeast Asia has two clearly defined groups of countries. One group of countries is located on the continental mainland, while the other group is spread across various islands off the mainland. The islands were heavily influenced by Arab traders and later European colonizers, so most people follow Abrahamic religions. Countries on the mainland were more influenced by Indian culture, so they are predominantly Buddhist. Brunei is an outlier within Southeast Asia, since its government is an absolute monarchy with conservative Muslim laws similar to countries on the Arabian Peninsula. Although it is quite wealthy like Oman, it has few skyscrapers. Both are conservative Muslim countries with monarchies. The Philippines has some similar traits in common with Samoa since both countries have English as their official language and are mostly Christian. The Philippines also shares some characteristics with several Latin American countries as well. The South Pacific is a relatively small group of countries. Keep in mind only Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea and Solomon Islands had enough data for this project. Fiji is like Trinidad and Tobago since both countries have a significant amount of people with Indian ancestry who were brought to these islands as indentured servants. 
As a result, both countries are quite religiously diverse, with significant groups of Christians, Muslims and Hindus. Papua New Guinea is another unique country within the South Pacific. Although Papua New Guinea and Tanzania are far different from each other, both were colonized by Germany first before becoming British protectorates. They have similar laws and their infrastructure is not well developed. Both countries are mountainous and have a tropical climate. So, what do you think about this attempt to diagram the world? Let us know in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to the Objective Lists channel as there will be even more interesting videos coming soon. For more insights and analysis, please visit objectivelists.com for new and thought-provoking articles about our world.